So we want to look at section 5.5, which is all about the properties that logarithms have. So recall that we introduced what a logarithm is. We say uh, you have a, a positive number a, and it's not equal to 1. And we also say that log base a of x equals y, or y equals log base a of x, if and only if, precisely when. Remember how this works. Take the a here, raise it to the, the yth power. And that's going to be equal to the argument, which we call x. And the x, remember, has to always be positive. So that's an important little fact. x is always going to be positive. So that's called the argument, the x, or the input right here that I'm circling. That always argument always has to be positive. And the reason for it always being positive, if you take a, which is a positive number, right? a is a positive number, and you raise it to a power, you're always going to get a positive number. Okay, so that's the definition of a log. So we want to look at some several properties of logs. The first properties we're going to look at are called the inverse properties. Inverse properties of logarithms. There are going to be two of these inverse properties. So here let's say uh, let a be a positive number that's not equal to 1. The first property is that if I take the log base a of, and let's say my argument rather than y is a to the x. So I plug in a to the x. Then that's going to be equal to x. And this is true for any, for any x value. x could be positive, x could be negative, x could be 0. So number two, the second property, is that if I take a and raise a to the log base a of something that's called y, so here we're raising a to the log base a of y, and that's going to be y. This is going to be only for any positive y value. y has to be positive here. Why does y have to be positive? Because this y is an argument of a log, and anytime you have an argument of a log, the argument has to be positive. Now, let me actually prove these two facts. I'll say I'm going to do a proofs, proofs of these two facts. So the first fact let's think about this carefully. Let's, let's pretend it is true. Let's say that the log base a of a to the x equals x. Let's pretend that's true. If that is true, then that's equivalent to saying, so we're going to write down the logarithmic base a as the exponential base a. You take a and you raise it to the x power, then that should be equal to what's inside of the argument, a to the x. And if they're equal, then we're in good shape. So is that true? Is a to the x equal to a to the x? Yes which is true. Okay, so that basically proves the first property. Now the second property, so let's say I have a raised to the long base a of y equals y. Let's pretend that's true. So if that's true, that's saying the same thing as Let's think about that carefully. So I'm going to go in the reverse direction. So this time I'm starting off with an exponential expression, right? An exponential expression. I'm going to color code everything. So remember how um, you rewrite this as a log. So you'd start off with the, the exponential base 
is base A, so we're going to make that our logarithmic base. We'll write log base A. Then we're going to have an argument. And then we're going to have a right-hand side of the equation. So remember how this works. You take A and the exponent of A goes on the right-hand side of the equation. That would be the log base A of Y, right? That's our blue exponent. And then you draw back an arrow to the argument. And what's the... What's in the argument? Well, it's this green thing, the y on the right-hand side. So those two things are equal, right? Log base a of y is equal to log base a of y. So which is, which is true? So that means our original expression back here underlined is true. Okay, so those are proofs of those two. Uh, we can do some other proofs, some other ways to do it. So I'll, I'll show you some alternatives. Number one, if I were to write f of x equals mm, log base a of x. Now let's write f of f of x equals a to the x, okay? So let's write that down first. Let f of x equal a to the x, right? And f inverse of x, well, we'll say f inverse of y is log base a of y. So remember that these two functions are inverses of each other. a to the x a to the x is the exponential function with base a. Log base a of y is the inverse function of a to the x. And I'm using a y here rather than an x for my, for my argument on the log. Now, if these are actually inverse functions, you should be able to compose them. And uh, the functions will basically cancel out. Let's see. So I'm going to do f. Which one do I want to do first? I do f inverse on the outside. f inverse composed with f of x. So if you do the composition, you leave the f inverse on the outside and the f of x goes on the inside. And then you have f inverse of, on the inside, or f of x is you're going to replace that with an a to the x. And then in place of the y in the inverse function, which is the logarithmic function, you'll plug in a to the x. So you have log base a of a to the x. Now, because we know that f inverse is the inverse of f, right, these two functions that I'm underlining in red are inverses. This should turn out to simply be, they should basically cancel out and just give me x. So that would establish the very first property right here. Right, that's the first one back here. That's another way to think about it. These are actually inverse functions of each other. The exponential and the logarithmic are inverses. Okay, so to prove the second one using that same technique, we would do f composed with f inverse of y. So on the outside I have f, and on the inside I have f inverse of y. And I'm going to replace this underlined f inverse of y with the logarithmic function log base a of y. And then I'm going to take log base a of y and plug it into the f of x function in place of the x. I'm going to have a raised to the, rather than putting an x up there, I'm going to put a plug in right here, log base a of y. Now, because f and f inverse right here are inverse functions, then they should cancel out and you should simply get y. And that's actually the second property right here, right? 
Yeah. So that's another way to prove those, using the fact that they're inverse functions of each other. These are called the inverse properties. So basically what happens is log base A cancels with exponential base A, and the X drops down on the ground. And in the other case, exponential base A cancels with log base A, and the Y drops down on the ground. That's basically what's happening. Okay. Um, here are some facts. These are two facts that follow immediately. Immediately from uh, one of our properties here. Number one, log base A of A equals 1. And number two, log base A of 1 equals 0. Now let's think about why this is the case. I'll do a little proof of each of these. So the first one, I have what? Log base A of A. Now if we rewrite this, this is log base A of A to the 1 power, right? Put a little parenthesis around that. So what we can do, we can use our first property, our first property, the idea is log base A cancels with exponential base A, and the 1 drops down on the ground. In number 2, let's think about that. That's log base A of 1. You can rewrite that as log base A of... Well, another name for 1 is A to the 0 power. Right, a to the 0 power is the same thing as 1. So what's going to happen here is log base a cancels with exponential base a, and we get the 0 drops down. Yeah, so anytime you see anything like that, you can immediately evaluate those. So for example, if I had um, examples, if I had log base 5 of 5, I could immediately say this is equal to 1. Why could I say it's 1? Well, I could say, okay, there's an exponent of 1 up here that we were imagining, right? But these would cancel, and it would just give me 1. Or let's say I had uh, log base 5 of 1. Well, I can imagine that this is the same thing as log base 5 of 5 to the 0 power, and these would cancel out. The log base 5 and exponential base 5 would cancel out, and I get 0. Or let's say I had, for example, the log of 10. The log of 10, you could rewrite this one as log base 10 of 10, right? Log base 10 of 10, even though you don't see a a base, it's understood to be base 10 when there's no base written. And you could say, ah, this is the same thing as log base 10 of 10 to the 1 power. So the log base 10, the exponential base 10 cancel, and you get 1. Or let's say we had the natural log of e. The natural log of e. So you could rewrite this as log base e of e. Remember, when you see a natural log in ln, a natural log is the same thing as a log base e. And then rewrite that as log base e of e to the 1 power, and then the log base e and the exponential base e cancel to give you 1. And these are things you can do really quickly. Some tricks. Okay, so what we want to do, we want to do some evaluating logarithms using our inverse properties. So we've already used, um, we've already done some evaluating logarithms using the definition of what a log is, but we want to use the inverse properties here. So evaluate each logarithm using the inverse logarithm properties.
So the main properties, remember, we have log base a of a to the x equals x. And the second one is, I'll call this one a and this one b, let's say, a to the log base a of y equals y. And it actually turns out that it's the first one we're going to be using all the time, the first one. So the second one isn't even going to really be used. We're not even going to use it here. I don't think so anyway. Maybe. We'll see. Okay, let's do some problems. So log base 7 of 49 to the 1010. So in the previous section, we would have done something... Uh, bit different in using the definition. We're not using the definition here. So what we want to do, we want to make sure that here this logarithmic base matches this exponential base. Do they match? Because we want to use this first property, right? We want a base A here and a base A here so they can cancel. Do they match here? No, 7 and 49 are not the same. So we're going to rewrite this as log base 7. So we're never going to modify the logarithmic base, but what we're going to do, we're going to modify the exponential base. So I can rewrite 49 here in terms of base 7, so I can write that as what? 7 squared, right? 7 squared is the same thing as 49. So you want that exponential base, which is 49, to match the logarithmic base of 7. It didn't, so we rewrote 49 as 7 to some power 7 squared. And then out here we have, what, 1,010. If I rewrite this, this is log base 7 of, let's see, 7. And the properties of exponents indicate that you should multiply the 2 here times the 1,010. So I'm going to do 2 times 1,010. I'm going to get 2,020. So 2020. And now because our log base 7 and exponential base 7 match, we can cancel those. And for an answer, we're going to get 2020, the exponent. It just drops down like that. Now, this is um, called the inverse method of evaluating a log. Let's do another example. So we have log base 64. And here we have Oh, let's not do that one yet. We'll do something else. Something simpler. Log base 3 of 9. Log base 3 of 9. So basically we're going to look at this logarithmic base and this exponential base and see if they're the same. If they're not, then we're going to have to modify modify the logarithmic base. I'm sorry, the exponential base. So the logarithmic base is never going to be modified. You're always going to keep the logarithmic base, but the exponential you can modify. So we have a log with a base 3. So we want the exponential base to be base 3. So how can we rewrite 9 in terms of base 3? We can write that as what? 3 to the second power. 3 to the second power. So now that uh, the log base 3 matches the exponential base 3, we can cancel these. And essentially what happens is this 2 drops down, and that's our answer. OK, number 3. Let's see we have um, log base 13 of 1 over 60, 1 over 169. So here my log base is 13. So I'm not going to change that. I want to keep log base 13. But I want to think about my exponential base here. Hmm, so I have a fraction here. So I'm going to leave it as a fraction initially. I'm going to write 1 over. Can we rewrite uh, 169 as 13 to some power? 
right? We want that 169 to have a base 13. So is it 13 to some power? Yeah, 13 squared, right? 13 to the second power is 169. Now notice because this is on bottom, because this 13 squared is on bottom, we don't like that, right? We're not happy about it being on bottom. So we're going to have to take that up top. So I'm going to take that up top. I'm going to write that as 13 to the minus 2 power. Remember when you have something on bottom, you can take it up top and it becomes a negative exponent. Now that we have a logarithmic base 13 matching with our exponential base 13 and the exponential base 13 is back up the top, we can just cancel those and we get a, for an answer minus 2, negative 2. Okay, here's a number 4. Let's say we have a log base 121 of 11. So we're not going to modify here our log logarithmic base of 121. We're going to keep that the same. Log base 121. Now the question is, can we rewrite 11? Can we rewrite 11 in terms of 121? Well, if you think about it, the square root of 121 is the same as 11, right? I can rewrite that as the square root of 121. 11 is the same thing as the square root of 121. And then, remember how you can rewrite the square root as an exponent. So you keep the 121 and the power here. So this is the square root power. So I'll put a little sub 2 there. Radical 2. So that radical 2, that's going to be your denominator for an exponent. And the top is understood to be to the 1 power. The top's going to be 1 half. So writing 121 to the 1 half power is the same thing as the square root of 121. So 121 to the 1 half power is the square root of 121, which is 11. So now that we have this log base 121 agreeing with this exponential base 121, we can cancel those. We get for an answer 1 half. Okay. So you have to know those uh, fractional powers sometimes. Fractional powers are the same things as radicals. Okay, let's do a number 5 here. So we have the log base 64 of 8 to the 20 power. So I'm going to rewrite this as log base 64. I'm never going to change my logarithmic base. Okay. And we got to think about 8. We want 8 ultimately in terms of exponential base 64. Now think about how 8 compares to 64. How does 8 compare to 64? Well, 8 is actually the square root, right? 64. 8 is the square root of 64. And then we have this exponent of 20 out here. Don't forget your exponent of 20. So I'm going to write that out there. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to write log base 64. I'm going to rewrite what we have the square root of 64 raised to the 20 power, I'm going to write that in terms of its fractional exponent. So this square root of 64, that's going to be 64. And when you write the fraction, so it's understood to be a square root, so we're going to put a 2 on bottom of our fractional exponent. On top, on top goes this exponent of 20. That's outside of the, of the square root. We get 20 over 2. 20 over 2. So I can re-reduce this, writing log base 64 of 
64 to the, what's 20 over 2? 20 over 2, 20 divided by 2 is 10. So now things are in a really nice form where I can match up the log base 64 with the exponential base 64, and we can cancel those, and we get simply 10 for an answer. Okay, so you have to be really careful with those fractional exponents. So you, you basically convert things over to roots and then convert the roots into fractional exponents. Okay, here's a number six. This one's a little challenging. It's going to be natural log of e to the minus 3 log, oops, spelled that wrong, log of 1 over 10. Okay, so I'm going to make sure everything's written out nicely. So remember the natural log here. The natural log is the same thing as the log base e. And then inside of that, we have this e right here, right? And then we have a minus 3 log. Now that green log, that's the same thing as log base 10, right? Log base 10. And then inside of the parentheses, we have uh, 1 tenth. Okay, so the first thing we can do here, we can cancel out the log base e with the exponential base e. So that's the first simplification that can occur. And that would give us minus 3 log base 10 of 1 tenth. Now notice how this base 10 on the log matches with this 10 here in the denominator. Now, unfortunately, that 10 is downstairs in the denominator, so we have to rewrite things a bit. We're going to keep the minus 3 where it is. We're going to keep the log with the base 10 where it is. And we're going to rewrite the argument here. 1 tenth, we can write that as 10 to the minus 1 power. Right? If you have a fraction, if you have something on bottom, you can take it up top and make it a minus 1 power. So it's understood to be 10 to the 1 on bottom, so you take it up top, it's 10 to the negative 1 on top. Okay, so now what we're going to do, we're going to match up this log base 10 and this exponential base 10, and we're going to cancel those out. So we'll get a minus 3 multiplied by this uh, negative 1 that drops down. Negative 1 is coming from that exponent. And those multiply together to give you simply uh, 3 for a final answer. Okay, so that's a tricky one. Now let's do one more tricky one. It's a number seven, I guess. For number seven, we have the log of e raised to the natural log of one over a thousand. So far, we've primarily been using this property Right, if the log base a, um, if you have the log base a of a to the x, these cancel out and you get simply x. But we haven't really used the other one, uh, a raised to the log base a of something, let's call it y. These cancel out. Now, I'll, I'll cancel them in the opposite direction. Like these cancel out, and you just get simply a y. So we haven't used that um, second property. I said we probably wouldn't use it. Actually, we do use it in this problem. Let's see how it works. So let's rewrite this. So first of all, when I write down the log, that's understood to be log base 10. Okay? And then, in parentheses here, I'm going to have, let's see, e to the ln. What's ln the same as? ln is the same thing as log base e. And then in this parentheses here, we have 1 over 1,000. So I'm going to use this uh, property B. I can get a 
get the right property B. So this one right here. So notice that when you have uh, A log base A of Y, if you take A and raise it to the log base A of Y, the, those two cancel, and you get Y. So we're going to do the same thing here. We have E that cancels with log base E. So we'll get log base 10, and that 1 over 1,000 drops down. Okay, so you cancel out the E with the X exponent log base E. And from here, you just want to say, okay, 10,000. Can I write that in terms of a 10 to a power, right? Because back here, you have an logarithmic base 10. So you want this 10,000, or sorry, this 1,000 to be in terms of base 10. So you have log base 10. We can rewrite 1,000 as, what's 1,000? It's 10 to the what power? 10 to the third power. Now, unfortunately, that 10 to the third power is on bottom, and we want to bring that up top. So we'll bring that 10 to the third power up top. We'll call it 10 to the minus third power. And now we're ready. We can cancel the log base 10 with the exponential base 10. We can get minus 3 for our solution here.